I have covered many topics on my channel. A large majority of those contain at least a sliver of inclusion about the Enclave in the stories I have told. And so, I guess you could say all of our roads have intertwined, Traveller. So a question a lot of you have probably been wondering about them is, what are their origins? What is the factor that binds the Enclave, making them the most evil faction, even challenging the Legion, in the whole of America? Today is the day I tell that story. There are other holotapes which I have mentioned throughout my channel history, which include many things about the Enclave, so you can check them out when I reference them. Let's begin, shall we? As I mentioned in my X01 Power Armor video, the Enclave was set up in the early 2060s to 2070s. The actual origin date is lost to the sands of time. The Enclave were tasked with the coordination of communist Chinese concentration camps during the lead up to the Great War, which goes hand in hand with their main focal point, the forced evolutionary virus. Creating super mutants, centaurs, and monsters that even the wasteland hasn't had a soil tarnished by. Yet. The Enclave sent some prisoners from these concentration camps and made them believe they were getting transferred, going home, or better. In fact, these prisoners were being sent to different laboratories across the USA where they were unethically tested on and turned into monsters. The Enclave also began their work on the X01 Power Armor during this time, and it was incredibly flawed and had many functionality problems which led to it being unfinished by the time the bombs dropped. Not like the bombs were much of a problem, however, as hidden bunkers across America, laboratories, and even oil rigs were utilised and fitted for the Enclave's survival requirements during the fallout where they would either wait out the bombs to regroup with the rest of their government, or continue their work from before the war with the little materials they had gathered before their departure into hiding. And with that, they disappeared, leaving no trace of their existence on the filth of the wasteland. During this time, it's safe to assume that the Enclave were done creating with the X-01 project, and actively used it on stealth missions and other operations, etc. And wanted to up their game, the creation of new power armor suits, weapons, and the Enclave's prized operation. The return of the cold case FEV project. Mariposa, California 2242. However, nearly 100 years later, people began to hear about men and women simply disappearing, bug men, and big metal birds in the sky. The Chosen One, as they were known, would witness accounts of the Enclave either murdering or kidnapping residents of towns and villages like Redding and New Reno. Most of this was at the unforgiving mutated hands of the Enclave's pet project, Frank Horrigan. The Enclave in California at the time had two somewhat known bases, a Poseidon oil rig in the sea somewhere, and a military training camp named Navarro. Navarro was used as a mainland outpost for Enclave recruits sent from the oil rig, as well as a hope for those who carried out missions on the mainland, which was a lot of soldiers. The oil rig was where the Enclave's main force hid, hosting the bulk of the Enclave's materials, its scientists, and even the Enclave president, Dick Richardson. The Enclave had everything that could ever need to survive for maybe even another century if they wanted to. The Enclave's main goal at the time was to restart the FEV project from before the war, to help aid them in further strengthening their army. The materials they needed were underneath the rubble around the Mariposa military base, and so the Enclave needed to dig. They began capturing wastelanders and settlers to do the work for them, and if they refused to go with the Enclave, they were killed. This is something I explained more in depth in my Frank Horrigan video, which you can watch here. Obviously, someone caught on to what the Enclave were really doing, and why people were going missing, which is where the Chosen One steps in. After learning their village had been captured by the Enclave for their project, the Chosen One sneaks into Camp Navarro and then manages to weasel their way onto the oil rig later on, where they were faced by Frank Horrigan, killing him and fleeing as the oil rig began to erupt due to Frank triggering the self-destruct. When the New California Republic and Brotherhood of Steel became stronger and more open to the wasteland, they focused on hunting any remnants of the Enclave that remain, which leads the Brotherhood to send a chapter to the east. None of the factions knew about Navarro, and presumably the Chosen One forgot to tell anyone in control. So Camp Navarro lay a safe haven for any remaining Enclave units who stayed behind after they fled. This wasn't for long, however, as Navarro was ransacked by the NCR in later years. Not many people know about what happened at Navarro, not even myself. All anyone knows is that the NCR killed all of the Enclave, soldiers and civilians alike who were camping there, leaving very few survivors, and if they left any, they were to be hunted to the end of their lives. This wasn't the end of the Enclave, mind you. As the other section, they fled, using their vertebrates, to the east being closely eyed by the Brotherhood Scouts and NCR Rangers. Washington DC, 
2277. The Enclave had headed so far east it was almost admirable how far the Brotherhood of Steel travelled to finish them off, even through Legion territory. The Enclave had settled down into a base much smaller than their previous oil rig, built pre-war and outfitted with a Zax AI which Colonel Autumn, the leading force behind the Enclave's retreat to the Capital Wasteland, claimed was the new president of the Enclave. This is where the Enclave began work on a new power armor project known as Hellfire, and it is rumoured they made a new suit of Enclave advanced due to the difference the way the armor looks, but this is uncertain. With the Enclave's retreat to DC, they further stretched their reach by stationing yet another force of the Enclave at Adams Air Force Base, a pre-war air force station that was home to a powerful technology horde the Enclave could use. When word got out of the Lone Wanderer, their father and Dr. Lee restarting the Washington Memorial water purifier, the Enclave were quick to stop them and presume control over it. Autumn wanted the water purifier for Eden, the President's hypocritical delusions of purity, that anything outside of the Enclave was impure and needed eliminating. And Eden's plans were to disrupt the water purifier with an FEV serum, developed back in the days before the oil rig's destruction, presumably. President John Henry Eden manipulated the people of the Wasteland with a series of iBots sent across the Wasteland to exclaim only one message, that being Enclave Radio, Eden's way of mentally and emotionally manipulating the people of the Wasteland into thinking the Enclave were the good guys. The Enclave were persistent in their domination over the Purifier, however didn't realise that the Brotherhood of Steel had pursued them all these decades later. There was a returning foe the Enclave had to deal with, and who had also partnered up with the people, disrupting their main objective. The war had begun. The Brotherhood used everything at their disposal to bring the Enclave down. T-45D power armor, nearly every weapon at their disposal, and their prized possession, Liberty Prime. I may talk about him in the near future, but for now, Liberty Prime was a gigantic war machine who took down Enclave Vertebrates with one shot of his laser eye. He could throw nukes, literally throw nukes. After Liberty Prime, assisted by the Brotherhood's best, a squad named Lion's Pride after the Elder and the vengeful Lone Wanderer, bloodthirsty for the Enclave after the death of their father, got the Brotherhood to the Purifier, the Lone Wanderer took it upon themselves to kill Autumn and start the Purifier themselves. The Purifier, when started, would consume such large amounts of radiation that anyone within the immediate vicinity was doomed. When the Lone Wanderer had to kill Colonel Autumn, they had to make a choice. Which is unknown to me. The Purifier starts, and nobody hears from the group that went into the memorial for a while. But the Enclave isn't done yet. Remember Adam's Air Force Base? Well, that becomes the Enclave's last hope, after Raven Rock's destruction. The Brotherhood were later tasked with sieging the Air Force Base and capturing the technology there. Using the Enclave's orbital strike, which sadly destroyed Liberty Prime, the Lone Wanderer, who survived the Purifier, activated the orbital strike and sends it upon either Adam's Air Force Base or the Citadel. The Enclave is defeated, once again. The Mojave Wasteland, Nevada, 2281. But the thing is, no matter how many times you kick the Wasteland's most powerful faction down, they will always find a way to weasel their way back. After Navarro fell apart, the last shard of the Enclave that remained in the West fled. Many vertebrates fell along the way. So many people dead. You can even find one of these vertebrates in the Mojave, with the skeletons of what appears to be a family outside. A dead Enclave soldier can be found slumped next to a dead Brotherhood of Steel paladin at a Deathclaw-infested valley, and a helmet of an Enclave soldier lies in a mine nearby to Jacobstown, the owner most likely dead. With all of this evidence, it would have you assume that the Enclave is really gone this time, for good. And it's understandable why you say that, Traveller. Truth is, they live. They are among us, sneaking around in societies like Vegas and Novak. Nowadays they aren't. They're most likely sold as slaves or arrested by the NCR. All it took to bring them back was a sleek-mouthed courier and a rather young man named Arcade Ganon. Arcade Ganon is someone I talked about in my Power Armor holotape vaguely. He was a former member of the Enclave, born after the oil rig incident in 2242. 
He grew up with his mother and the squad of the Enclave soldiers who valiantly fought under the command of Arcade's father, who sadly fell in battle when Arcade was just a young lad. Years later, the home that he had found himself growing up in became swallowed in the flames from the New California Republic. Navarro burned, vertebrates flew and fell, explosions rattling the Californian sand. Men, women and children of varying degrees of innocence and guilt died that horrific day. Arcade and the Remnants? They were an exception. After growing up to be a man, Arcade's mother sadly passed away somewhere out in the Mojave. The squad slowly began to exit out of Arcade's life, living on their own and hiding from the authorities like the Brotherhood of Steel and the NCO. Arcade then wanted to help people with his vast scientific knowledge, which led him to join the followers of the Apocalypse at the Mormon Fort in Freeside. This fort is where the Courier picked him up and they travelled the harsh heat of the desert together, going through different locations before, finally, Arcade opened up and confessed to the courier of his past. The courier then suggested something extraordinary. What if they assisted Arcade in getting the gang back together for the second battle of Hoover Dam, to bring back the Enclave, or a fragment of it at least. With that, Arcade led the courier to various locations of his old friends where they persuaded them into rejoining the fight, the team knew that whoever they would end up fighting for in the end, there was no good outcome for them, but a good one for the wasteland at least. The remaining team members were Battle Commander Judah Krager, located in Westside, Aviator Daisy Whitman, a vertebrate pilot located in Novak, Orion Moreno, heavy weapon specialist who lived near the Camp McCarran area, Cannibal Johnson who lived in a cave on his own, and scientific research specialist Dr. Henry, located in Jacobstown. After Arcade and the Courier got all of the remnants to the bunker near Jacobstown, Arcade explained the situation to his old friends. They were to pick a side. Most of the members seemed in favour of the New California Republic, apart from Orion who hated them after both Navarro and the Ulrich's destruction. Orion wanted Legion, for revenge against the NCR. But the rest wanted the NCR, Arcade wishing for an independent New Vegas. With that, they made their decision waiting patiently upon the courier's call for the Battle of Hoover Dam. Finally, the day had arrived. The Legion began their vicious assault on the dam, the NCR strategically and valiantly fighting back, bullets flying, blood spilling, the screams of the wounded. A beautiful silhouette in the sky, the sounds of propellers rotating at incredible speeds, engines coming to a halt, and a vehicle lowering. The Enclave were here, all of them. Arcade meeting the courier at the gift shop area of the dam. The Enclave knew that if the Legion ended up winning, they were to be lashed to crosses, but prepared to live in the NCRCF if the NCR won. Their final, glorious send-off. The battle was over, and the remnants bowed to the knees of the NCR if they were incarcerated for their war crimes of the past. Nobody's heard a peep from the Enclave since. There's still areas of the wasteland I'm yet to explore, learn stories of. They may be gone in DC in the West, no signs of them in the Commonwealth either, but I know they're still out there somewhere, I just need to find them. I might as well tell you now that I was one of them too. Always have been. I remember still training on that oil rig. My expeditions across California with my brothers. Navarro. I remember all of it. I just escaped the NCR in time. Done that too many times. <laughs> But my story is another one for another day, right? I am the Wanderer. I bear no insignia, no mark of bull or bear or steel. An outcast, running from the faults of my past. Enough said. Let's keep going, shall we?